Danny and I are really excited to share with you today our experiences with digital minimalism. Yeah, after getting rid of all of my physical stuff, I started to feel like I had all of this like unnecessary clutter on my computer, and I was looking for photos, and I couldn't find them because I had so many old photos stored, and they weren't organized, and uh, just really feel like I needed to minimize that aspect of my life as well, so it felt lighter and more free. So we're going to share our experiences with how we've sort of organized and kept our digital lives minimalist and then also explain how we went from having stuff like files, physical files, physical pictures, memorabilia and downsized all of that to just the just the stuff we wanted and turned it into a digital file. Let's talk about some of the stuff that we used to have that we turned digital. And I had a bunch of photo albums. Yep, file bo a box. I think we yep. both had the same like, yeah. box, of box of files. Big box of files, yep. Um, I had a lot of like old like notes from school and letters, letters that you had sent me when I was on tour. Yeah. Um, like some random pictures or like little pictures with picture frames that like, you know, Brittany had made me when she was younger that our nieces and nephews have made us. I had a lot of books, actually. Oh, a lot of physical of books. books, CDs, DVDs. Yeah, a ton of DVDs. Got rid of all that stuff. The amazing thing about living in this day and age is that it gets easier every day to be digital. Yeah. So it's like one of the best times to be a minimalist. It's also a dangerous time because it's easy to just take all that stuff and put it on your computer and then have this other area that's yeah. really cluttered in yeah. So when we first both initially did this big change, we both did it the same way. It was kind of fun. I Danny did it first and then I followed suit and do you want to explain kind of? Yeah, I bought a cheap flatbed scanner on Amazon that had good reviews for, um, you know, scanning quickly and scanning multiple things at a time. And I uh, holed up for like three weeks in December one time when it was really crappy weather out and watched a bunch of movies and just sat at my computer in front of the TV and scanned for hours at a time. <laughs> Yeah, and I did the same thing. It just it only took me a day. I just put all my stuff together and just scanned. Yeah. And during that process, we didn't just scan everything we had. We you were saying you probably got rid of yeah, like I probably got rid of like 70% of the stuff and didn't even bother scanning it. I really went through it. I weeded out. I think part of why it took a while is cuz I was really experiencing a lot of the emotions of all of that stuff that I'd had, yeah. which was really beautiful. One thing to think about as you're scanning this stuff in is to make sure that you're organizing it intentionally. So creating what we both did was like create a file system that worked and name the files in a way that makes sense so it's going to be easy to find. I definitely um, did that kind of as I went because it takes a little while for the scanning process so then you can also be kind of like fiddling around and naming everything. So we went through and did that with everything with our physical files, our pictures, memorabilia, music, um, movies, everything. Yeah. And at that time, we also took the opportunity to go through our computer and organize the other files we had had on there. I found that like a lot of photos that I had, I just didn't need all of them. I got rid of a lot of just extra stuff that was on there that I didn't need, went back and saw like a couple years later, it just wasn't as important to me to save anymore. And now it feels so nice to go through our files and be able to find them easily and to just not feel like there's extra clutter there, just like that yeah. physical clutter you want when you open up your computer for it to feel like a nice, spacious, clean environment full of possibilities for, for yeah. creation. Yeah, it's amazing. And it's also really fun because like my photos are organized by year. And so if someone's like, do you remember that thing that we did back in high school? And I can be like, oh, well, let me go check my photo files and I can find the picture of it within a couple minutes. To sort of keep this organizational system in place, I set regular reminders, probably about quarterly, to go through and recomb my files and also my bookmarks on mm. my internet browser to just sort of keep them clean and to clean out stuff. And you were mentioning something interesting yeah. about your recent trip to Ireland. Yeah, so I, I recently went to Ireland and Holland last year and I took a bunch of pictures. I have a lot of friends who asked for pictures and who wanted to see a lot of photos, um, more than I would normally take, but I did take more and I was with a friend who took a bunch. Um, so I saved a lot more photos than I normally would have from that trip, knowing that in another year or two, I'm probably gonna go back and cull through it and pull out the ones that are really important to me and get rid of the rest. And we found that a really cool time to do this is if you're traveling and don't have internet. So like if you're on a long flight or um, yeah, yeah, airplanes or airplanes buses or like um, sometimes when I'm at work and I don't actually have to be working, I'll just do it. And I have a slightly different organization system than Brittany. She sets the reminders. I just dump my phone like once a month. I dump all my photos and videos onto a folder on my desktop. And when I start to get too many folders on my desktop, <laughs> it drives me nice. nuts. And then I go through them and get rid of them. Um, so that's how I do it. I mean, there's a million different ways you can do it. but. 
perfect yeah i also use that desktop system with like projects i'm working on and then make sure i clear off my desktop completely every couple days yeah and then like have this beautiful background and then you open up your computer and it's like it feels like yeah this really nice space Brittany and i are both like voracious readers and um i switched over to the kindle a number of years ago and have slowly but surely kind of reacquired all of the books that i had in print um yeah. the ones that i love enough to read again um, and we share a Kindle library, which is really nice and um, a way amazing. for us not to pay as much money. We yeah. also use the physical libraries in yeah. the places that we're in. I do, especially because yep. I'm there a little longer than you. But um, And then the libraries have really great digital downloads nowadays and yeah. borrowing systems. So there's so many options. And I've found like, it's just a really great way to stay a reader and yeah. to go from having like shelves full of books, yeah. um, Cabinets full of files, all this stuff, all down to just a laptop and yeah. an e-reader or a laptop and a phone. Yeah, and I actually recently bought the iPhone 6 Plus, which is really large, and the screen on it was almost as big as my Kindle. And although I like reading on the Kindle a little better than the phone, it wasn't worth it for me to travel with an extra gadget and an extra charger and something else to charge and update. And so I just now have my phone and my computer. and been really awesome while doing this we also took the opportunity to switch over any accounts that weren't already paperless of ours to paperless accounts and yeah. to reduce our amount of snail mail by as much as possible I actually um, actually like went like an extra step instead of just making everything paperless and I collected like all of the catalogs and all of the junk mail that was coming to my house and then on a lot of catalogs this is time-consuming but it was really worth it um, there's a phone number that you can call on the bottom and or an email address or something and you can request that you don't have these things sent to you anymore and that really reduced the amount of mail I get I still do get junk mail and everything but it's definitely a lot less um, and there's also a company, and I can't remember the name of what it was, but um, that you can also like go fill out a form online and you right. stop getting credit card offers, which it doesn't stop all of them from coming. Like I still get ones from my airline miles accounts and stuff, but it stopped. I probably get half as many An option, now. Especially if you're like a traveling minimalist. And that is to have a friend or a family member or to pay a service to be your snail mail address because while you're traveling, you don't have that option. Yeah. Which is actually really nice. Like I love not getting mail. Oh, I love so great. <laughs> that somebody else deals with sorting through it for me and there really aren't many things in yeah. there that they have to go through. Another yeah. thing that I did like around the time I started scanning everything was making sure that I have a scanned copy of all of my important credit cards birth certificate, passport. Um, every time I get like an updated credit card or ATM card in the mail or an insurance card, I scan both sides of it, put it in a file so that I always have that on hand. And that's like really great if your wallet gets stolen or if something happens, but it's also been like super convenient for so many other things like work needs a copy of my passport. I don't have to find a place to scan it. I just, you know, attach that to the email. Or if you really need to scan something, um, a lot of libraries have scanners and it costs like maybe 10 cents a page. Kinko's, Office Max, Staples, all those places. Yeah, there's a lot of places around yeah. you can find scanners, so you don't need to own one. And I found with the the iPhone 5 and better, yeah. like the pictures are such good quality. Yeah, but and I think a lot that, of phones yeah. take just as good quality pictures as scanners. People ask yeah. all the time about memorabilia and photos and that kind of, that sentimental stuff. Yeah. That may be the, the question I get the most off is it. It's yeah. like, what do you do about the stuff that you feel like, you know, you have that attachment to? And I think it's different for everyone. And I feel like you know, you'll hang on to that stuff and get rid of it or not as it feels right for you. One thing that we've both really found is like, we want to be really present in our lives, in our journeys, in our travels, in our experiences. It's not so much about like taking a ton of pictures when you're somewhere or getting a lot of souvenirs. It's more about being present there, enjoying the experience, maybe yeah. taking a picture, but yeah really being there which definitely cuts down on the amount of stuff that you have yeah and also really like thinking about the pictures that you're taking you know do you really want to experience all of these amazing views from behind the lens of a camera or would you rather just you know like enjoy it and be present in the moment and then maybe take like one or two pictures and when you're taking those pictures be really thoughtful about how you're framing the picture and what it's gonna look like so instead of going through 10 pictures and finding the best you can pick one but you have your picture or you have two pictures and um, yeah, it works out really well. I've really enjoyed my vacations a lot more now because I don't feel like I have to take photos of everything. And this really makes sense for us and how we like to travel. Obviously, if you're like a photographer or a videographer yeah. and that's your totally life, like, different. it's going to be yeah. totally different. Or if it brings you a lot of enjoyment. Yeah.
whatever feels right for you. Um, the other thing about memorabilia is a lot of the stuff that I had when I was younger that I was really attached to, um, like a special blanket or something, I have taken photos of and since gotten rid of. And it's like, what are we really looking for? It's like, we want to, it's memorabilia. We mm -hmm. want to have that memory. We want to be reminded of a feeling that came up for us during mm -hmm. that experience. And I feel like there's a lot of ways to remind yourself about that special yeah. time. Yeah. And you don't necessarily need the thing. And I think if you want to keep the thing, then that's great right. too. Of course. But if you're feeling like weighed down because you have a ton of stuff that like this person gave you from this trip or like, oh, that trophy when I was like nine years old, <laughs> it can be really overwhelming. Yeah. yeah, it felt extremely freeing once I got rid of like all of that digital clutter and the extra memorabilia and the stuff that was in storage that I was never using but I knew was there and I felt some attachment to. It's always so much fun to share with you guys and thanks for being here Danny. I yeah. love when you're on our channel. Thank you for having me. All right we'll catch you guys later. Give us a thumbs up if you liked it. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. You'll never have the sacred stone. <laughs> oh this new crazy mother. Yeah. yeah.